to the traffic jam, traffic jam. Is that the third? Traffic jam, traffic jam. Doing is that the third? Now, moving on to entertainment. So, Miss Reese was talking about our entertainment segment this week. Okay, so do you watch Saturday Night Live? I don't. Okay. Ever since Eddie Murphy hasn't been on it in the 80s, but I did catch the most recent episode. With Kim Kardashian? I had to. Okay. It's something, it's about the something about the perv in me that's just like, man, I know they're gonna put her on display. I know they're gonna really show her curves and her assets. And I wanted to see what she was talking about though. Did you get a chance to check it out? No, I don't care about any of that. Um, oh, she's so look, I am a Kim looks fan. So good, bro. I've watched the Kardashians since season one. See, that's what I won't do is watch their show. Well, I've been there since the beginning, since the sex tape, right? So I am Since the sex tape got me weak. <laughs> I am a Kim K fan. Um, that was the first episode as the pilot? The sex tape? I mean, it was talked about, yeah. Technically. Um, and so, you know, I didn't watch Saturday Night Live. Um, but I did catch a couple of her jokes in her mm -hmm. monologue. Right. She made fun of herself, her sisters, kinda everybody, right? That's that's what she, that's what they do because they understand that. Yeah these jokes and things are being said about him. So she made a joke about her dad and how he was so influential and because of him, she met her first black person. Let me tell you what she said. She met her first black person. Wanna take a stab in the dark at who it is? Not in the dark. <laughs> Not in the dark. Bro. Now, I thought it was funny, Too right? Too soon for the Goldman <laughs> family, Doug. Too but soon. Nicole, uh, Nicole Brown's sister uh, took offense to it. Um, I thought it was funny because, I mean, that is a part of their story connection and how they got famous, who they are, right? But, um, yeah, not everybody thought it was So, funny. let me just put it in perspective for you, right? So, Kim Kardashian, father, um, was it... What was her father's name? Rob Kardashian. Rob, senior? Okay. So mm -hmm. Rob Kardashian is her uh, famous father who teamed up with Johnny Cochran, yeah. Shapiro, and all the others that defend, successfully defended OJ in Simpson. the murder trial, um, who was accused of killing Nicole Brown Simpson, his ex-wife, and Ron Goldman, her new lover. Kim Kardashian at this time was probably a, a toddler, maybe, or maybe like an adolescent. Right, so she was around though. She was alive, so she met OJ, and you know what I'm saying. These, they, she was a kid. She was OJ's well, well, lawyer's all, kid. Because all the kids were born, right? Yeah. So she was like seven. She was around yeah. six, seven. So now, fast forward thirty years later. Oh, let me let me take it back. So during this time, this is not just his lawyer, to my understanding. This is his friend. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe Johnny Cochran Chris Jenner wasn't and his friend. Rob would hang out with OJ and Nicole. Type shit. So. Obviously, OJ, Kim, Rob, Chris, the whole, they just, yeah. they a village. Yeah. So, Nicole is in the mix. Nicole's sister is probably in the mix. So, that whole story plays itself out, and as tragic as it was, but he has got off for the at least alleged murder. He got caught in a civil case later. But, to have the child from the barbecue that used to be kicking it with you and your now deceased sister... Making jokes on Saturday Night Live about the shit? That would hurt, bro. Yeah, would it? That would fucking hurt, bro. I would want a piece of... I would want my pound of flesh up out of Kim. And she yeah. has it to spare. But if I'm just saying, Not like... Legs. It's different... <laughs> <laughs> right above them. But it's different if she wasn't connected or affiliated or no Nicole Brown Simpson's sister. She probably felt like, man, you was... Part of our childhood upbringing, we was rocking, and now you're on Saturday Night Live making light of the situation. That shit would hurt a little bit, bro. Just being on some human shit. Well, look at Calvin. He has a heart. I'm having a human experience. But that shit was funny. <laughs> and that's the thing. You can't get mad at that, because it's the flip side of that. You can't get mad at that when she's sitting here talking about herself, talking about her people, talking about everybody, including your dead-ass sister. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of, and she put it out there like, man, did he do it? Did he do it? I still don't know. You know what I'm saying? So she kind of, you know, made light of it. Everybody else does. Why should she not be able to just because she was a child during the time? But I see it from both sides of what I'm saying. Oh, okay. But in terms of the Saturday Night Live shit, she did good on the skits. 
she was a little funny in her monologue, and she wasn't hard on the eyes. So she she did an overall good job. I give it like a B minus. Because she wasn't hard on the eyes. Um, okay, also in entertainment. So Rap City is on. I need to figure out what time it comes on because I missed it. Definitely saw the clips and was wondering, wait, wait when? is this even on BET? <laughs> right. Do I even have BET? I don't. <laughs> I must get I the do. app. I, I gotta get the BET app, dog. I don't know, because Rap City used to come on doing, no, like around It came three, on after school, yeah, around like three, about 3, 3, 3.30, and was on for like an hour and a half before your parents got it. home. Clearly missed it. Yeah. So we had an episode with Fat Joe, um, and he asked him, like, who he asked him about different rappers, like who they remind them of from back then. Type shit. Right? And so he said, who now reminds him of Tupac? Right. Now, obviously, and I ain't, I'm not gonna say I'm like deep into hip hop like that. I mean, you I know said, the history. I who know. Said, Call the Kendrick. I don't think, no, like you can't compare. No, ain't nobody know Tupac to me. I mean, I get that, but if you had to pick somebody, I who wouldn't would you pick, pick anybody. So, that's not um, how the game goes. No. <laughs> he says, though, the baby. And I said, hmm. Can you see that? Can you see the correlation there? The height? The attitude. Oh, I was going to say the height. No. Tupac was a little taller than the baby's ass. Yeah. I would say the attitude. So, you know, but when Fat Joe said it, he was like, uh, you know. I know I'm gonna get it for saying it, and Twitter lit his ass up. Yeah, what they said. Twitter say? was like, How dare he? That is a joke. You're a joke. The baby was like, Huh, yeah. Yeah, the baby definitely <laughs> pinned that shit, but he also said the niggas gonna throw salt on it, which apparently they're doing. I didn't know that he's getting drugged through Twitter, but like Dave Chappelle taught us in the closer, Twitter it's not, a real, not place. a real place. So we don't gotta worry about that. But I would say, in terms of like the spirit of what they're talking about, if we're talking Tupac, that. It would be kind of like a Kendrick or a Cole that's talking some revolutionary shit. And I'm talking about like mainstream. There's a, probably a lot of underground artists that are more comparable to Tupac than I even am familiar with. Yeah. I have to ask my brother Marcus. But as it pertains to personality, as it pertains, pertains to I outspokenness, the baby a zero bit. fucks given. Tupac gave zero fucks. Yeah. Bro. He just happened to kind of like stand on the side that we agree with in terms of black power yeah. and what he been. He was conscious. Yeah. But Baby stands for what he stands for unapologetically, and that's very tupac yeah, at the end yeah. of the day. No, that's why, I, that's why I wouldn't say, I mean, if we talking about lyrics and rap, yeah, but I would never say a J. Cole because he's so yeah. more humble, so more yeah. quiet, so more like, no, I, you know, I don't yeah. want to know. I'm going to be back here with my fist up. Right. Tupac, man, like, fuck this shit. Right. You know what I mean? That's the baby. So, but uh, let, me, let me have a little segment with you then. Who do you oh, think is this know. time period's biggie? Just a fat black nigga that can rap, man, real good. Who is that? I don't know. Niggas was saying it was Ross when he first came out, just on some how he sounds. He tried to sound like Biggie with the every day I'm hustling, every day I'm hustling. Yeah, but is like, there a new Biggie out here? I don't know. See, Tupac to me was more like in your face. Fuck you, nigga. But you my guy. But, right, but if you on some bullshit, fuck, fuck you, you, nigga. You know what I'm saying, Biggie. And I mean, I wouldn't that really, wouldn't, you know what I'm saying, in the Biggie. Right, okay. I'm a Tupac fan, if we gotta choose, I'm gonna right. choose Tupac. But right. Biggie seemed a little bit more laid back, like a big teddy bear, but just rapped about the shit he had to do because he had to do it. Right. You know what I'm saying? He had a, a good, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, I don't know. It's tough. I don't know. It's tough. It's tough. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I just, I just don't want it to be over understated, I should say, in terms of Tupac's. Um, worldly perspective and his holistic artistry. Like, you know what I'm saying? That nigga came up with Jada Pickett in acting school. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? He was a thespian. That's why he did so well in the movies and shit mm -hmm. like that. You know what I'm mm. saying? And I would almost say... Lucky. Yeah. I would almost say in, in that vein, 50. I would almost say in that particular aspect of Tupac, How he was he's very outspoken, yeah. he's very brash, he's very in your face, but that nigga's catalog is more than music, you know what I'm saying, type shit. So no, I'm not saying agree. they're the same person or nothing no. like that, or he can hold a candle to him lyrically, but, but just he, in terms of just an overall artist and his artistry, and I, I, I would want to see like what can a J. Cole or what can a Kendrick Lamar do acting-wise. 
Or in other areas. In other areas outside of music. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so let's talk about Nicki Minaj. We haven't talked about her much. Vicky, Vicky, Nicki. Well, you know she's married now. With all due respect. Mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> her husband's name is Kenneth Petty. He's a <laughs> rape accuser. What? Uh, he's a, <laughs> He went to jail for rape. He was accused of rape? Yes. As was her brother, was he not? Mm, this is a pattern. God damn. She needs... Some help. Man, <laughs> she needs some the healing. Therapist. She needs um, some healing. So yeah, so the rape accuser was on the real okay. recently. The person that accused Mr. Petty of rape. Of rape. rape. Yes, okay. he served four years. He pled guilty. He did. 1995. He served four years. Um, and she was on the real talking about kind of what was going on and what happened. I didn't hear all that. I just this shit was in 19. I don't like. Nah. Why are we going back? What are we talking? But. About? She filed a lawsuit of $15 million. Now, this is where the story, obviously, why I got interested in it. Because, nigga, do you have $15 million? Like, Nikki, did you know this shit was with uh, him when you married his pre ass? You got prenumped him? Prenumped not? So, I'm, I was just a little confused. Yeah. Was, was it the That's love? That's a lot of baggage. That's was a lot it? of baggage to come to the table with, bro. Was the D worth $15 million? Type shit. I don't know, man. And then, and my, my question is... So we we were talking about this in a totally different setting about how rape is very gray. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like rape is very black uh -oh. and white. Uh -oh. But rape is very gray in that if you have intercourse with somebody that's inebriated, primarily if, if a male has sex with a inebriated female, it's technically rape. Even if in the moment she's saying yeah, and then later she on she's like, out. I wish I wouldn't have done that. I ain't talking about pass out. I'm talking about oh, inebriated. So you might have been buzz driving before and been above the legal limit, right? You're above 0.08, yeah, yeah. but you're not passed out. No. You're just intoxicated. If you go have sex, that nigga technically raped you. And you can say no in that moment, and it's rape. Or you can say no later, like, nah, I wasn't of sober mind, therefore it's re retroactive rape. So that's very gray to me in terms of that. Then you have the choke me, punch me, spit in my face. And then you go to court... And they like, what happened? He like, he choked me, he punched me, he spit in my face. Like That's you been told me Who to. Is spitting in people's faces. Oh, motherfuckers be in. Motherfuckers be in. In their face? In their mouth. Motherfuckers That's be one they mouth nasty. spit in, dog. Not oh, anybody man. I know, but it happens. There's a market for this. You know what I'm saying? How do you know? I just I read. I read. <laughs> and watch. But I will say this, man. What type of rape like did he confess to? inebriated sex or like take the cookie rape? I don't know. Yeah, because that's deep. I just wanted to put that out there, but it sounds like the nigga guilty on all charges. Okay, but on a lighter note, <laughs> my girl Ashanti celebrated her 41st birthday. She is 41. Man, she is 45, bro. She you see the picture I posted? Fine. No, I'm off into. Oh. Oh. I said, oh, I still have work to do. Oh, just my God. Thinking, just it was, thinking of her, dog. It was, it was nice. She's yes. beautiful. Why, oh, why do relationships with these thicky, bicky, I would love to have them on my team, not work with the person they're with? What, okay. what happens? She so, has a terrible personality? What so the like fuck is wrong Nelly, with Shanti? Yeah. Right? I think Nelly thinks he's a, of, No, I think Nelly thinks he's a... Well, I'm not going to say he thinks, because I would consider him a pretty boy. Okay. Right? So, typically, this is what I've seen, Gathered. learned. Right. <laughs> what you deduced. You can't, a fine chick can't be with a fine man. Mm. Because the man think he fine, right? And he's used to women flocking right. to him. And you being fine, you not flocking. You like, yeah, you fine, I'm fine, we fine. Like, I mean, we just standing here. We just standing here. Right? Um, and so, sometimes I think that causes... Conflict. Interesting. It's just what I've noticed. That's right. And not all cases. Because sometimes, even though like like that couple, um, Duval, Duval, Duval? Lil Duval? No, I think his name is Duval. He played football, but now he has he acts oh, on the Oh, I know you're talking about. I know you're talking right? about. I know you're talking about. Him they got like wife. beautiful young children. Boys. Yeah, they got yeah, boys. Yeah, yeah. I love them, right? Really nice couple. I think they look great together, right? I think he's handsome and I think she's attractive. He may not, his attitude about himself doesn't feel like he think he a pretty boy. You right, see what I'm saying? Right, right, right. But they are two attractive people that yeah, came together. mesh well. But that's what I was going to say is maybe it's more of a mindset. So if Nelly yeah. didn't feel 
Right, he like was a pretty he boy, was the finest it could thing. Work. Yeah, as yeah, opposed it to worked. He, you had you a handsome brother, but you humble about it, or you just don't even really care about how you look. You care about how she looks. Jay Z and Beyonce, Swiss Beats and Alicia. You see what I'm saying? Like two ugly motherfuckers. That two ugly motherfuckers found somebody two dimes beautiful and two dimes. Well, it's a mentality. They're the icing on that cake. But you know what though? I, I read a quote the other day that said, "Victory breeds confidence. Struggle brings breeds strength." And I think that Victory Swiss yeah. confidence, mm -hmm. struggle brings strength. So okay. if you struggle and you persevere, oh, I'm a strong motherfucker. I've been through the struggle. You know what I'm saying? But if you get wins, you know what I'm saying, and you're winning, you're going to be confident. So you could be Shabba Ranks, but have a number one album. So now I got a victory, so now I'm confident I'm Mr. Lover Man. You know what I'm saying? Versus I just look like Shop Ranks and I don't have, I'm in the struggle. I'm just strong and ugly. So, you know what I'm saying? Be careful with that shit though. But I feel like Swiss has gotten wins. Yeah. Jay Z has redefined what winning is. <laughs> right. And it represents and exudes in okay. their confidence level, and women are attracted to confidence. So Beyonce right. is attracted to that nigga's confidence and his cash. Versus <laughs> his cachet and how he looks. Yeah, no, Same I agree. With. I agree. Because Alicia's a catch too, without makeup. Without makeup. Without makeup. Yeah, if so I'm interested me... to see who Ashanti will settle with. We'll see. Um, and the last, well, I got two more things to entertainment. Real quick, my show is back out the 20s. Oh, that's uh, the Lena Wave, Wave joint. And it's yeah. about her, right? Coming up in her 20s. It got a little girl that looked like her playing oh, the lead Jesus. role. What happened? The girl don't look like her, Calvin. Okay, LGBTQ people don't cancel us, okay? I'm not saying all LGBTQ <laughs> people look alike. I'm saying this young, skinny, manly... Stop. Just stop. ...character is playing Lena Waithe in her 20s. Yes or no? I don't remember no? it, it being about her. I, I think it Just may be taken her. from some of Pieces her experiences. And, yeah. yeah, but I don't think it's exactly about her because it's three friends. One who is gay and trying to navigate her way through the film industry and then mm -hmm. i think the other girlfriend is a lawyer and the other one's an actor okay right but it came back on i think this is season two bet wednesday nights nine o'clock it's really good damn our live ended but it's still catch up onable it seems like yeah yeah okay, yeah if yeah. you haven't seen it and then the other show bmf i know you were telling me about that yeah okay so i heard on the radio that who and he didn't say i don't remember his name but they haven't portrayed him yet in the show. Okay. But I guess he got wind that he that they were going to put mm -hmm. his story out there. He's he basically said, <laughs> "Do not play with my name. Don't put me in the show. I don't need no parts of it. If you do, I am fucking up actors, directors, producers, executive it's producers. Not a game. I'm not playing with y'all. And whoever this person is was like, you know, I don't speak much. I don't say much. So when I do, y'all should listen. Yeah. It was like a three minute message. And where can we find this? Um, WGCI. Oh, uh, uh, they played the like audio? Yes. Wow. It was, it was a lot. Yeah, because I mean, at the end of the day, people that make it out of that game and they're either out of jail or out of a casket, like, I don't want no parts of that form of life because, man, they going backwards and canceling niggas. They can go backwards and indict niggas. Like, yeah. I don't know what the statute of limitation is on that shit, but, like, I wouldn't want my name mentioned in none of that stuff either. Yeah. So, if you're watching that show, you should hear a lot of buzz around that. Be careful. Um, be careful watching that show because he might be coming out the viewers. <laughs> shit, he's named everybody associated with the show. If he's in your name in the credits or you had a premiere, nigga, off with your head. Right, right. Real. So cool. Uh, but BMF is on Hulu for those that ain't scared to watch it. Uh, and I think it's on episode three or four. I think it's on coming up four. And it's just getting better and better mm. and better. Same with Wu-Tang, which is on season two. That is my shit. And I think it can't, the most recent episode came out yesterday. So y'all can check that out if y'all want to know the story behind the Wu-Tang Clan. Um, I've also been watching a couple different shows if I can go into. Mm -hmm. uh, American Rust, it's, it's weird. It's like a Fayetteville, Virginia or some okay. shit. Old farm town, one sheriff, one deputy ass town where a murder has been committed by a former high school standout athlete and the sheriff of the town is sleeping with his mom so he's trying to help cover up the whole little thing and it's just it's some redneck shit small town yeah small stuff. town yeah good old good old hicksville type story but i think that's on prime and then i've also been watching uh law and order organized crime 
So the nigga Stabler that used to be on SUV got yeah. his own show called Organized Crime. Oh. That shit's pretty good, bro. That shit is Law pretty. Law Order has definitely dog thirty seven seasons. Wow. Yeah, SVU I think is the most popular, but this is a spinoff of SVU, so you'll see. Okay. Um, what's her name? Uh, Mar 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 Marishka Haggerty's character. Yeah. Uh, pop in and out oh, of episodes, no. so it, it is dope, man. But uh, yeah, y'all can check those out on all your streaming platforms. And then last but not least, there's a new season of movies that made us. So the most recent episode that I was watching was about Elf. I don't know if you up on that movie with Will Ferrell. Yeah, Elf. I loved Elf. The background story of Elf is pretty cool. Oh. It's pretty cool. And then I know that they're going to do one coming up shortly based on the cover art that I've been seeing of Nightmare on Elm Street. And I cannot oh, wait I for that shit. That. I well, I've seen some back. Shit. I've seen that on, on Wes Craven. Yeah. They did some stuff on yeah. him. Yeah. yeah. Wes Craven was a monster dog. When was we was growing scary. up, Wes Craven was like was scary. our he, Stephen King. He was King. the boogeyman. He was literally the he boogeyman, the boogeyman dog. He was literally the boogeyman. Scary movies don't, they, they don't compare to how it was back then. Nah, when you were just believing everything you and saw, you were dog. You scared to go to sleep yeah. because it was in your dreams. Type yeah. shit. Top three, big. top three um, scary movies growing up for you. Name one. All Freddy Krueger movies. Nightmare on Elm Street was crazy. Um, when he drugged this nigga through the bed and then shot gorgeous uh, of blood up to the ceiling. When she was running up the steps and feet was like sinking and Oh, couldn't steps. get away. Oh, couldn't get away. You remember no. Kikade? You remember Kikade? Yes, the, black the black dude? dude. Come on, man. With them red ass Reeboks, bro. Oh, yeah. Man. When he, when he had the um, soles on his chest. Uh, he just had all the bodies he had claimed on his chest. That nigga had a pepperoni and sausage horrible. pizza full of <laughs> souls one time. I said, this nigga Freddy Cole. Oh, that nigga was crazy. Yeah, but yeah, uh, definitely not right on the street. What else you got? Um, um, Carrie. Carrie. Carrie was. Carrie. Yeah. They're all gonna laugh at you. They're all gonna laugh at you. Yeah, it was. When it was she got wild. the clothes in the doors of the gymnasium with that, her mind. Look, that taught me you treat people how you want to be, be treated. treated. The golden rule: <laughs> do unto others as you want done unto you. All right, so we got Freddy. We got Carrie. Give me um, one more. So this one was more of the music. Michael Myers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was the we music. We knew he was coming. Yeah, we and knew he it was, was the fact that he was just walking. The nigga was, was at never, a snail's he pace. Ran. He was he at walked. a snail's pace. And it was like, and was always on your heels. Always on, always. What is going you know, on? So Halloween Kills is coming out. Jamie Lee Curtis has made a career For off real. of fighting this nigga, <laughs> Michael Myers, dog. <laughs> you, were you a fan of Jason? I was. Shh, 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 shh. Okay, so why did Noah? Bah, bah, bah. Yeah, look, Ashton. so Noah's tutor is named Jason. What? He was like, his Mom. tutor? Yeah. Okay. He, he was like, Mom, Jason Voorhees. I was like, who? Jason Voorhees got me. What? <laughs> he was like, it's Jason. I was like, boy, look. Doug, I remember being a shorty and watching a Jason flick and he was fighting with a nigga and it was a black dude. I feel like he was a black, maybe he wasn't a black dude, maybe he was an Italian, white boy. And he giving it all he got. He working this nigga. Ooh, I, man, da, da, da. And he get tired out, just like Dante Wilder. And this nigga said, man, Fuck this shit, man. Give me your best shot. And this nigga Jason <laughs> punched this nigga. <laughs> and his head came off. <laughs> and rolled into a garbage can, dog. And the garbage can closed. I said, oh, this nigga's strong. <laughs> this nigga's a strong killer, dog. That nigga, watch that hook. <sighs> that nigga is Tyson Fury 2.3, nigga. What was um, another... This it, was, it wasn't scary, but it was just more like... The never... same call masker. That, but um, what was the other one? Um, it, the you didn't never want to get stuck in the desert. Uh, you turn wrong turn. No, the hills have eyes. Oh, hills have eyes. No, 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 no. I think you're talking about Jeepers Creepers. No, the hills have uh, eyes. My shit was Jeepers Creepers with that little scarecrow nigga that would come to life and, and take out a that school bus of students movie. and kill them one at a time. Yeah, that was a man. Movie. That motherfucker every 27 years, nigga, <laughs> get low. <laughs> No, but Texas Chainsaw Massacre had a good little run. No, it did. It was, it, it that movie just made you think like country white folks was yeah. just crazy. Yeah. And not to be stopping yeah. at nobody's house not asking for help. But yeah, Hills Hills Have Eyes, definitely. Um, something a little bit more recent, The Descent. There was like these women that were like cave divers and they just wanted to explore Middle Earth. And there I was a species that. of individuals down there that just was 
totally hungry and was eating these bitches one by one, dog. Totally the hungry. descent, they were totally hungry. Uh, the descent was crazy. Jeepers Creepers was crazy. Um, it was a newer train, chain, Texas Chainsaw Massacre that was it had that sexy ass girl from Seventh Heaven, Jessica Biel. Mm. That one was a good one. Um, I used to like the. Did you like the yeah. Dawn of the Deads? Bray. No, I, no. Bray. Like I wouldn't be scared of that shit, bro. I, man, shut your ass. <laughs> Shoot him in the head. That seems to work. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, we not these slow walking ass killers. Yeah, I can't not, do it, bro. Doing I can't that, do it, no. man. But what was y'all favorite movie growing up or now? And uh, in the in theaters now, you got a whole bunch of shit from uh, Don't Candy Breathe Man. 2, Candyman. Did you know it was three Candyman? Like Candyman 1, Candyman 2, Candyman 3 when we were growing up. And now there's just a remake of Candyman. I only remember mm, one Candyman. I might remember two, but definitely not three. Were, were you a fan of Child's Play? Yeah, I like Chucky. Chucky was cold. Chucky, Chucky was I didn't cold, want bro. the doll, but Man. I, yeah. I'll be your friend to the end. Right. <laughs> I'm a good guy. <laughs> Fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that nigga would come at this nigga. Charles Lee Ray. <laughs> but because of those movies, though, I would listen to my kids when they tell me, like, weird shit. Yeah. I'm like, you really saw that? Yeah. Like, Mom, yeah, something's not right. I'm like, I believe you. Yeah. Ooh, do you remember uh, Pet Cemetery? Yeah. Oh, yeah. my nigga Pascal. That nigga had half a head, dog. Oh, but when the baby was just chasing the kite. And the semi truck was coming this way, and the bad shit. Just seeing that bloody that ass shoe. Yeah, because the whole concept was those those parents couldn't mourn the death of their child, right? So they took them to the pet cemetery to bring them back to life, and the baby came back as a killer. Mm. Oh, you gotta rewatch the original pet cemetery, mm. man. But that's enough, because I'm scared now. But uh, I think that about wraps us up for this week's segment of entertainment on this week's episode of This and a Third. Literally. Literally. This is a traffic jam, traffic jam, traffic jam. Is that the third? Traffic jam, traffic jam, traffic jam. Doing this, that, the third.